Thank you. I normally shun microphones, but I've worked myself into a pitch of coughing and hardly voiceness by not sleeping and having a very good time and general bad judgment. So I will have to stand here <laughs> and use this microphone, which I hate. All right, <clears throat> so when I was young and went off to college, I was so excited to go to the East Coast because I grew up in the rural West Coast, and I saw this sign that said Harambe, and I was so excited to learn about the racial stuff going on that I'd heard about vaguely but knew almost nothing about. <clears throat> so I showed up to the meeting, and the group that was there said, what are you doing here? Have you come to oppress us? Who do you think you are? You don't belong here. They threw me out. They threw me out of their meeting. It was a bad way to start my college years there. Later they had a problem with mice, not surprisingly, in the place where we ate, where we slopped our food all over. And they started to put up traps. And I, of course, was busy springing the traps and saying, look, there's got to be a better way. And let's go to the administration. And one of the, one of the African Americans that was there in the dorm said, you care about mice, you don't even know what suffering is. I'm the one who's oppressed, I've been oppressed all my life. I thought, he sure doesn't care about mice. And he thought, she sure doesn't care about African Americans or other races. And that was where it ended. <clears throat> Much more recently, I went to speak at a conference on the East Coast that was a women's conference. I spent days preparing a PowerPoint that you just could not miss the connections between the oppression of women and the oppression of animals. And I was so excited to make this connection at that conference. They did not want to hear anything I had to say. They were so angry at me for showing those pictures that connected women to animals. They said, we've moved beyond that. We don't want to be associated with animals. We don't want to talk about our bodies and how they're related to animal, other animal bodies. Talk about one more bad experience. <clears throat> So commonalities of oppression, commonalities, we can figure that out, right? Shared, similar, linked, interconnecting. Oppressions, put down, held, um, exploited, basically others gaining advantage at your expense. <clears throat> All right, so commonalities of oppression. So what groups are oppressed? Let's hear it, give me some. Women, Women? go. Keep going. Good, keep going. Good, 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 good. Excellent. All excellently done. All right. So now tell me, how do other animals fit into this? How are they the same? How are they different? Any takes on that? Okay. Okay. And I think you can, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. One of the distinctions that I like to focus on is that whereas women can oppress people who are not as able-bodied and not as able-bodied people can oppress those with different skin colors and those with different skin colors can oppress those who aren't as mentally <clears throat> able, animals, other animals don't oppress us. They don't join in the fray of oppression. It's a one-way street. So that's one of the differences that I, I think it's important to call attention to that difference, even though the focus of this panel is similarities. I think that that's an important difference, that they are oppressed by all other oppressed groups, and they do not oppress any other oppressed group. <clears throat> so knowing what we know about farmed animals, the first thing we might ask is, how can a gay activist gobble down those gross globs of cottage cheese? How can a feminist eat her bacon and eggs for breakfast? Do they not get, what don't they get about heterosexism, about keeping wombs full with the fruit that the exploiters gain from? about the idea that you must have a male with a female because of what it produces for those who are in power. What don't the feminists get about using a womb, using a vagina 
to rape and force in sperm to create offspring in a womb, stealing that offspring, stealing that nursing milk, stealing those eggs, using their bodies. Those feminists and women in general, we know that that's everything that's against the ideology, the understanding, the sympathies of feminists and those who stand up for women, whoever they are. We know that. Now, I will say that having just been through a, a conference in which they talked about many of these things, none of this has been focused on. Now, why do you suppose that is? Why do you suppose no one mentioned that the vast majority of all these animals we're talking about are females and that they are exploited for their reproductive organs? That they, are, they suffer longer because they're females and they suffer in unique ways because they're females, because they're bred again and again for the benefit of those who own their bodies and control their reproductive organs. Why do you suppose that hasn't even been mentioned, let alone brought to the fore? Sorry, here, but I would say also just in the movement in general, it isn't. But yeah, that, that's key. <clears throat> So when I look at, back at my experiences, my first year in college with Harambe, with the mice, I look back on this conference, I know that something went very wrong, that they did something wrong, that they caused wounds and derision where there could have been concordance and working together, that they caused confusion and hurt for someone that came to work with them, however ignorant, however clueless I may be. And here's the other thing I know. This movement is the same. We don't get it. And we're not patient with others who don't get it. And I know what that did to me as an activist, and that we, we must stop this, that we must, if we're going to ask others to listen to us. Thank you. If we want others to pause and hear our message, to know what it is that matters to us at a minimum, and then even more, we want them to change for us, for God's sakes, we have to be willing to listen. We have to be informed. We have to, at a minimum, take up some of these habits that show that we understand. Now, I understand that as activists, we can't take on every cause. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm saying stop buying certain items because you understand why you shouldn't buy them, which is nothing more than what we're asking others to do. Stop supporting things which are hurting others because that's what we're asking others to do. But first and foremost, we have to understand and know why. We have to be open, we have to be listening, and we have to be willing to change ourselves. Thank you. <laughs>